change in leadership or to break up a, a break apart TPS into smaller districts or both? Um, and I ask that because I wonder if you're envisioning a state takeover of the district like Texas state education mm -hmm. officials are doing um, to the Houston School District right now. It's kind of yeah. conversations about, you know, when I say all options are on the table, what, what I mean is it is heartbreaking to me to see district with this many low performing schools. And so for me, you know, I've, I've talked to you often about, you know, I really do try at least a couple times a week uh, when school's in session. I love taking my daughters to the bus stop because it's just as great. They're excited. They love it. They're excited to go to school. And you look at a district of this size when over nearly 70%, so that's nearly seven in 10 elementary school kids, they're getting on a bus going to a district that is in the bottom 5% in the state. And so for me, when I look at that, I go, we've got to, all options have to be on the table. And so that's where I keep saying, look, I wanted more time, my board wanted more time to go, we're gonna absolutely see what is the best path for these kids and how can we know that what we're doing is going to impact in a positive way these students? So, you know, when I look at these options, all options are on the table. And I want to see what's best for Tulsa, uh, what's best for the parents, the teachers, and the community. And, you know, when I talk to Tulsans, they want to be proud of their schools. They want to see the achievement. And, again, I, I get this sense of it's a loss of hope of, I guess, we, we want to be excited about this. Give us something to be excited about. And in seven years, we haven't seen it. And so that's where you know I'm dedicated to making sure that the largest district in the state is a high-performing district. And to that end, I want to know what expertise can you and your state agency, which has recently also seen some high rates of turnover, offer Tulsa parents and Tulsa taxpayers in running the school district better than the educators and other administrators currently in charge? Sure. You know, what, what we've seen for seven years now we had a superintendent state department for eight years we've had superintendent guests there for seven years there was no accountability there were no checks she had three audits that came back questioning their their financial situation and the financial safeguards in place there was never any improvement made there so look we know money's not getting to the classroom the way it should we know money's not being spent the way it should and then you see the performance you see the outcomes you see the embezzlement issue and and what you see here is a state uh, as a district that's been allowed by a state agency to, to not be held accountable for not the right questions to be asked. Um, and, and you know, you've seen that from, the, from their own board as well. You've had, you've had a few board members asking questions, then you've had, seen some giving them a rubber stamp. And so what I would say is we're gonna absolutely do all that we can in our power to ask the questions of how do we provide for every kid a better education? What are the resources that they need? How do we make sure resources are being used appropriately? How do we ensure the finances are where they need to be? How do we ensure that teachers are being supported? And again, I've got you know all the anecdotes and, and talking to teachers about concerns around discipline, concerns around resources, concerns around their, their issues inside the district being heard by leadership. And these are all things that, again, they have to be corrected. We have to move the school in the right direction. And so, you know, again, we're going to look to find any way possible to improve, especially reading. When you look at reading, and I've thrown that number out there several times, just because if you're not reading proficient in those early grade levels, I'm telling you, it is it is such a tragic story. It's been told for years, but we know if you don't, that's you know why my one of my biggest asks was for the biggest investment in reading initiative in state history was because if kids don't read on grade level, it's just disastrous and it's heartbreaking. And you got a district that's so low performing in that area, it has to be targeted. You, we have to have these kids reading on grade level. Yeah, it's got to never catch up, you know? And you know I love those, you know, I, I love to visit the STEM academies, and I, I love, I'm a high school teacher myself, but you know, I, I, I often ask them, I go, what are we doing with the earlier grades? Because if we don't get that right, you're only gonna have 10 or 15% of kids that, that's ever gonna be a reality for them. And so, you know, it's just so important, uh, these elementary schools, to make sure that they're, Reading proficient, make sure you're getting good quality teachers in the classroom and keeping them there. And that was why we targeted our signing bonus for those early grades is, hey, we have got to get high quality elementary school teachers in here and, and keep them, support them so they can do a good job. Um, you mentioned the high profile embezzlement case. Um, your, your agency's own director of accreditation recommended that TPS be accredited with deficiencies. And he said in last week's public meeting that there were four to five other school districts, I think mm -hmm. I heard him tell a board member, mm -hmm. that also had that lack of internal control deficiency mm -hmm. um, on their accreditation report because right. of embezzlement. Um, 
why were those districts accredited without delay and why are they not in your sites for state takeover or are they? So what we're seeing with Tulsa is the size and the amount of money is unique, number one. Number two, what we've seen is we have found out more and more information around, we've seen more and more information around the protocols that are in place around information being shared with both our agency and her local board. And so as we start unpacking this more and more, we discovered a problem that was a much larger issue than what we've seen in these other districts. Um, you know, and you, you partner that with a lot of other things, but just in the this, in this specific of talking about um, the issue around finances, we are seeing more and more information around both what she's done, uh, what the superintendent has done locally, but also what the superintendent has shared with her board, shared with our agency, that has given us more concern. And again, that, that's where we want to do our due diligence to make sure that we are looking for facts, we are talking with the district. Um, you know, I, I have reached out to the district and asked them to bring certain documents um, to me. So you know, those are documents we want to be able to review, we want to be able to look at. So we're wanting to do all that we can to make sure that we have all the information in front of us to make a, a well-informed decision. You said protocols. Do I understand you to mean financial protocols? Is that what you're talking yes, about? Okay, it's on the State Board of Ed. That board refused to follow the Education Department's recommendation to place EPIC charter schools on probation over findings that tens of millions of taxpayer dollars have been spent on administrative cost overruns, which you care about, and um, on student learning funds that were unaccounted for. Why are you treating TPS different than you treated EPIC as Secretary of Education? And isn't that arbitrary? Sure. So, you know, I, I was very clear throughout that um, situation, you know, I wasn't a voting member at the time. I want transparency in our schools. I want accountability, especially around school finances. The one thing that you see is, you know, taxpayers have been very willing to invest in public education across the state, but they want two things. They want to see results. They want to see that student performance is increasing. And number two, they want to see accountability and transparency around those dollars. And so, you know, whatever the situation has been, I have, I have been very upfront about, listen, you have to demand accountability, you have to ensure there's transparency here, and we have to, as a, as a state agency that now I'm in charge of, take very seriously any kind of issue when it comes to a district not being upfront, or once you discover an issue that's been there for years. I mean, that's the other thing that is very important here is, we've seen an audit with, the, with, the, with Tulsa Public Schools for three years flag this for them. So, and again, it, it is, we are seeing a pattern of behavior here. These low academic scores are not new. This isn't, this year this happened and now we've got to figure out what to do with it. It has been terrible in Tulsa for years. You know, you have a superintendent, you know, I just, I, I'll put it this way. She's a bus driver, she's driving the bus. The bus has veered into a ditch and it has now crashed into a tree. You know, at that point, I think you get a new bus driver. And what we're seeing here is a pattern, both financially, of not correcting issues, and then there being this huge problem that occurred from that. And then number two, academically. You see these huge issues that have been out there that haven't been addressed and are continuing to get worse and get worse. So there comes a point where you have to make decisions, and Tolson's want change. The parents want change, the teachers want change, I know the kids want change, and so we have to act upon that. And I've always advocated for acting when you see a district that is not doing what's what's best for the kids. So you did you did advocate for the state board to act against Epic when the, when even much larger, more expensive issues were were seen there. Oh, I always advocated for you've got to do a deep dive into all the finances of the district, you've got to get to the bottom of what's going on with the schools. You have to be very open, very transparent about that. Uh, I've always advocated for transparency, accountability for all of our schools. Okay. Is there anything that could change your mind about a state takeover of, of TPS between now and when you bring a recommendation to the rest of the state board in August? Look, you know, uh, Right now, I am really in a fact-finding uh, stage, you know, and that's where, again, we're asking for documents from the district, um, taking meetings uh, with the district, get, taking meetings with other folks in Tulsa that have knowledge about what's going on there. So, 
Look, I, I am very open to all options right now. There, there's no decision that's been made in, in my mind. Um, you know, I, I can't speak for my, my board, but you know, in, in one-on-one -on -one conversations, they're in the same boat. They, they, they want information. They are, they are asking for more information, and so that's what we're doing. So, you know, right now, currently, you know, my plumb line, my, my decision-making matrix is what's going to be best for these kids in this district. Um, and so that's uh, that's what I'm going to allow to, to lead me. That's what I'm passionate about. That's what I feel my role as state superintendent. You can't have the largest school district in the in the state at this low of academic performance. We need change. Uh, we have absolutely got to see a change take place here. And again, it, it's it's for all of Tulsa, but you know the parents, teachers, and kids. That this can make a huge difference in their lives if we if we correct this.